sorry to say that as a dad and someone who loves stories, we're going to kick off today with, well, none other than a terrible dad joke. Um, and as I love stories, I think these are kind of apropos. You know, I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you'd like that one. Why does the ghost always need more books? She goes through them too quickly. Yeah. And last but not least, why does an elephant use his trunk as a bookmark? So he knows where he stopped reading. Yeah. You see, I, I love a good story. And, and today we're going to talk a lot about stories. I want to share my story first. And, and I'm wondering if, if you're like me, you've had one of those tingle down your spine moments, you know, kind of like one of those moments where you met your first love or you heard something powerful that you just couldn't shake. You know, looking back on mine now, it shouldn't, I should have seen it coming. But, you know, perhaps that's what made it more powerful, because if I had known it was coming, I probably would have done everything in my power to prevent it. Because little did I know that that moment that came would change my life forever. Now, let me take you back to Katakan 8 last March. I was sitting in the audience after having presented earlier that morning, just minding my own business. And this is a picture from Jekyll Island, Georgia, Georgia where Katakan 8 took place. And I felt encouraged and energized after sharing and learning and meeting so many of the friends, my friends that I had met on LinkedIn for the first time in person, or as the kids say, IRL. And Mark Rosenthal and Tilo Schwartz, two uh, gentlemen who practice the Toyota Kata, came up and they asked us all to share or write down three challenges we had in our life and personal, professional, whatever it might be. And so I started writing down these items. And I looked down at my paper, and I just couldn't believe what I wrote. And that's when that tingle hit. And that paper said, I don't have the confidence to charge for coaching. And that was that moment where I knew I had to go down this rabbit hole and really see where it went to. And so for the next day and a half, I talked to my good friends there at KataCon, folks that had coached for years and practiced the Kata. I asked them about, you know, what they charged, what their practices were, how they worked with folks. And later that next night, I came back to my hotel room and I was excited because I was waiting for an email from um, a company uh, that I had applied for a job for. And I'd had three amazing interviews. It was a financial service company, which is the industry that I came out of and a continuous improvement role, a small firm. And I was so excited because everything seemed like it was going in the direction of me getting that opportunity. But when I opened that email, it said, sorry, your journey ends here. And I knew in that moment that that's actually where the journey had to begin. And so that next morning, as I woke up, I went out to the beautiful beach right there overlooking the Atlantic and Jekyll Island. And I started reflecting, if I do go down this road, what do I want the people I work with to feel? And the answer for me was, I want them to feel seen, heard, and most importantly, valued. And the one word that encompassed it all was worthy. And that just really was so powerful for me to think that I could have an impact and help people feel valued and worthy. So as I came home and landed from that trip, I knew I needed to practice what I was preaching to move forward and pursue my dream one step at a time. And so I did. I reached out to one of the best kata coaches there is, Gemma Jones. If you're familiar with her, she's amazing. And for the next 10 weeks, we explored what this challenge was for me to start up my own coaching practice, who I was as a coach, the kind of people that I wanted to work with and that I could help the best, and what the process of doing that would look like. And I was so committed to this. I don't ever do anything half-assed. I always go hard. And that's what I did with this process every day, mapping out the, the block diagram, um, looking for metrics so I can measure how well I was doing. And see, that was the problem. I was always looking to see how well it was a performance for me. And I remember that 
I wasn't showing up well for my family. I was noticed I was more snappy with my kids and my wife and my friends. I didn't have as much time for them. I was so engrossed in doing this well. And so I remember on the last reflection I was doing as we were finishing up our time in my work with Gemma, I was walking around this local park, quiet summer day, sat down on a bench and started reflecting and thinking to myself, I've been here before. I've been in this place where I've always wanted to look good and be seen well in my work as a, in, in recovery work. It was all about looking good and being seen um, well, rather than truly believing inside me that I was someone that had value and worth. And I recognized that the kata isn't supposed to help me feel, affirm me. It's supposed to be about the learning. And that was my big learning, that it was about the learning, not about the performance. And from that moment on, I really felt a sense of peace, something that let go, that I was more relaxed and open. And this relaxedness, this confidence, it came up and came out in a conversation I had with my wife over sushi. Now, in that conversation, my wife uh, described me as a certain type of animal. Now, I'm curious for you, and Skylar, maybe you can help me here because I, I don't, I'm not seeing the chat, but I'd love for folks to put in the chat what animal represents how you show up at work. So um, some thoughts or maybe like you're a bull in the china shop <laughs> or a butterfly, like quietly flitting around and not wanting to be seen or heard, um, or perhaps an elephant who's very empathetic and, and loves community. I'm, I'm curious to know, just put in the chat what that is either serious or funny, would love to hear from you. Any, um, any, uh, anybody there, I'd love to hear from. Skylar, if you can share them, my, my chat's not up. I don't have, oh, I have a hand raised. Oh, never mind, it went down. I don't have anything on chat yet. Okay. Well, if, that, if that's not, that's totally fine. Uh, it was for me, and feel free to put in the chat, I'd love to hear kind of how you see yourself, because this is what, for me, was kind of a, um, a funny moment. Um, and I am seeing the chat here, Skylar, so I, should, I think it should be okay. Um, okay, hey, um, I saw Hugh's hand go up. Hugh, do you need assistance? Can you hear me, Hugh? Hi, Hugh, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Um, your chat is disabled. That's why you're not getting anything. Okay, that could be a problem. Let's see. Thanks, you. We're we're practicing yeah, continuous thanks, improvement you. right here, right now. I love it. So awesome. Well, well, it's just okay. Well, if anybody would like to, okay, they've sent it in in Q and A. Okay. Um. Oh. So we got a mule. Um. Uh. I love it, a mule. <laughs> that's so good. I'm wondering if that's stubborn. <laughs> I'm I'm just guessing at that one. <laughs> but well, for me, I'll just share for me and feel free to, you know, it sounds like the chat's been re-enabled. So feel free to put those in the chat. I loved, I'd love to hear what y'all see. But for my for my wife, she shared with me that she always saw me in this light of being a worker bee, right? A cog in the wheel, right? At work where I was just, I was doing what I was told. I was never someone who was going to like rock the boat, so to speak. But after going through this process with Gemma, having this learning about it, about the learning, I was someone who was ready to not be that anymore. And my wife said, that's what she saw too, that I wasn't that cog or worker bee anymore. And I was someone that even in the midst of fear, I was ready to take control. Now, you know, that, that fear, it showed up in, in different ways. And, and so I reached out for continued support in moving out on my own after my work with Gemma. And although it wasn't kata coaching, my coach and now good friend Christos from Greece, um, we worked together weekly, but communicated daily on different steps and moving forward in launching my business. And the exercise that he took me through is an old Stoic exercise inspired from the Stoics. It's called fear setting. And in this exercise, there's three different parts. The first part is where you think about what you're wanting to do. For me, it was launching my business. 
and what's the worst case scenario of what could happen? And then in the next column, you put, what could I do to prevent that from happening? And then the last column, you write down, what can I do to recover if that happens? The second part of the exercise asks you to reflect and think about, okay, if I launch, if I do this thing that you're going to do for me again, launching the business, what it, it may or may not be a huge success, but what's going to be the minimum benefits, the things that are going to come from it that you know will happen regardless of like the sales or the success or, or those, those like visual things that you could see that typically would show you success. And the last part of it asks you to really reflect and think about six months, a year, three years down the road, what are um, the things that would happen if you don't do this? If you don't make this choice to step through this thing that you're afraid of doing? For me, again, stepping out on my own in six months, a year, three years, what would that look like? And at the end of that time, doing that, sitting there in that library on that Friday and doing all that reflection on this, I knew that it was time for me to move forward and move out on my own and to take control. Because you see, in the organization I had been with, I'd been someone during my time there who had always let the circumstances, you know, dictate my journey. I was thrown, tossed by the seas, the winds, whatever it was, that's where I was going. It was like it was guiding me. I was never one to actually take control because I didn't believe that I could do it. Now, I'm wondering for you in your um, experience in an organization you've worked with now or before, and please, I'd love to hear from you in the chat. Did you or do you feel like you've been someone who's been in control or confident enough to be in control or not? Would love to kind of just get a pulse for folks on the call. Just yes, you felt in control or no, at a certain point you haven't. Um, just would love to hear what folks are, are thinking about this or their experience. So that's, yeah, sometimes says Maggie, love it. Felt in control to a degree, no, from, from Dan, love it. Anyone else would love to, I just love give it, getting a feel for how, what folks experience is. Cause I know what my experience is. Like I always felt like I wasn't in control. Um, over a few things, but fear of what I can't conquer. Thanks, Chris. It's beautiful. Guiding, but not full control. Right. There's these, I haven't felt it in the past. I've been with the same company for 16 years. I'm starting to feel like I can help control things. So it's this, this idea that we have some, but not all together, right? And I totally resonate with that feeling. On November 8th of this last year, at 8.38 a.m., I did just that. You see, I was told by my manager, I would take a role. This is the role you're going to take. And at that moment, after doing this fear setting exercise, I shared with you that I was the captain of my own ship, you know, that, that I would be someone who would take control. And I put my resignation in on that day. Now, a couple of weeks later, as I was kind of sitting in this space of having taken control and moving forward and was really excited and was sharing with folks, anyone that I was talking to about where I was headed, I was sitting down to coffee here at a local, local coffee shop with a friend I'd known for a few years. I was just sharing, you know, my excitement and energy around this new space I was in and taking one step at a time. And my friend say, shared, Sam, there's just something that is a calm intensity about you. And I thought about that and I reflected, what is it that is giving me this groundedness, this confidence, this calm intensity? And as I reflected on it, it's that practice, that pattern we take in the improvement kata, one step at a time. And by doing that, I build within me a confidence that I can take on any obstacle that comes my way. Now, as I shared at the beginning, I love stories, and that's my story, and an amazing one. But you might be saying to yourself, well, Sam, that's, that's just fine for you. You know, that's great. You've had that experience, but, you know, 
that does does the kata really do that? Does it really grow that confidence in you? Well, you, you don't have to just take my word for it. One of the folks that I worked with recently, we'll call her Susie, she spent four years as a manager. She was striving to be a director and made that clear. And it wasn't just for the title. It was because she really wanted to make an impact as a lean leader in the development of the people that she led. And she was so excited about this opportunity. For four months, she got the opportunity to be an interim director, to really make a difference in the space she was in on the people she was working with. And so when that opportunity to have that full-time role came about and she interviewed, she felt blindsided because the position was given to someone else. She did not feel seen or heard or valued, and her confidence suffered. So when she came and we started talking a few months back, she had talked about how in her life, moving forward, that she had always stro strived to settle. In the kata, we talk about, you know, moving towards or striving towards a challenge. But in her life, she'd always work towards a settle. That had been her, her pattern. And so as we moved and practiced the four steps of the improvement kata pattern, and she engaged and she talked about how it was very uncomfortable for her. Um, so as she practiced that pattern, she was able to be more ready and more confident. In fact, she shared how this dream organization she now wants to work for, whereas before when she would be told no, like we don't have an opportunity for you now, she is more engaged with that process. She's not just taking no, she's moving forward and asking questions and taking it step by step because she has that belief that she really can do it and has given her the confidence to move forward one step at a time. Louise, she was in a different space. She was anticipating a career transition coming up. And so we started working on a presentation she was doing getting her ready for that one step at a time, one day at a time. And then the moment happened where their, that position was no longer needed. And so she had to choose to continue to work and move forward through daily practice of taking steps every single day. Now, although it wasn't in a more formal kata setting where we were doing everything by the book with the coaching questions, we were taking daily steps forward towards where she was wanting to get to. And as we moved forward, she shared that by taking these daily steps, it helped her move from someone who was very tenuous in her steps to someone who felt empowered, to someone who felt like she could move forward in her life. You see, this was the story of others, you know, and maybe it's some, some of the themes you can, you can kind of resonate with. And it's one, as I was reading the book by Dr. Susan Jeffers, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, the theme throughout that book, you, maybe you'll, these expressions will kind of resonate for you. But the phrase that she said, the fear that we all struggle with every day, every single person is, I can't handle this. I can't do it. I don't know what to do. And I think back to my first kata coach, Julie Simmons, and how she talked about the practice of the improvement kata. Build skills and capabilities as you move forward towards what you're striving to achieve and you move through those obstacles, you will see that you've built skills and capabilities. And I would add that as you see those skills and capabilities that you've built over time, you build that mindset. Not that I can't handle this, so that when the storm comes, you believe, you have confidence that I will handle it. And that's what happens with the improvement kata. That is the hidden gem that you find as you practice the improvement kata. Confidence. Now, you may be saying to yourself again, Sam, okay, great. This is fine for you. You're not the one that's paying my bills. Yeah, this would be a nice dream to go after. But come on, Sam. Like, I've got kids to feed. I've got bills to pay. And I can resonate with that. As a father of three married, totally feel where you're coming from on that. But what I want to try now is a little experiment. We're all continuous improvement practitioners are here are familiar with that. And so I want you to step in just a little bit to maybe a place of discomfort. Take out that piece of paper. And I want to explore your story a little bit and thinking about where you want to head to. What's that dream place you want to be? So go ahead and just 
draw a line down the middle there in half. And I want us to take, go through just a little quick 10 minute kata pattern here about your story and see if this doesn't maybe change the way you think about how the kata pattern can help you find confidence. So draw a line down the middle and I want you to think about what's your dream destination? If you're thinking about your, your vocation, you know, what is that dream place you want to be? And I want to take maybe like two minutes here. Um, and I want you to draw on your picture on that one side. What is it? Either a picture or a group of pictures, whatever comes to mind. There's no judgment. There's no nothing. Just write down or draw what comes to mind first. So we'll take like one to two minutes here. And then I want you to put in the chat, what is it that you drew that came to mind and surfaced? So let's take about one to two minutes here. And as you're drawing, I want you to put that in the chat, what comes to mind is, or what you draw as, as you do that. And then just put that in the chat. Again, there's no judgment. We're just kind of thinking, What's that dream place I want to be in my career, in my vocation, the thing that I love doing? And draw a picture of that. And then would love for you to share in the chat what it is that you drew. Give it another minute here for you to, to do that. I really want you to step into that, you know, maybe that uncomfortable place here. Uh, really embracing where it is that you want to be and drawing it out. Anything that's coming up, I'd love to hear from anyone that's that's drawn something there. What's come up for you? What's that dream place that you want to be? Chris, that's beautiful. Empowering, counseling, discipling youth and adults. Beautiful. Love that picture. Thank you, Chris. What else? What else is coaching management in the coaching kata? Love it. So great. So beautiful. It's such a powerful practice, right? When we think about it, when we use this pattern, we're building confidence in people, not just helping them achieve something. We're building something within them. What else? Anything else? Love these. I want you to continue to think. Now, so that's the first step in the kata pattern kind of getting that vision of where we want to be, that, that challenge that we're striving to achieve, that picture. So that's, that's where we're at now, right, or where we're going to. Now I want us to think about the second part in the, in the pattern. You know, what's our current condition? Where are we at right now? And I want you to take that other sheet of paper. Think about where you're at right now in relation to where you're heading and draw a picture here of what that looks like. Again, we'll take like one to two minutes. Again, just a quick sketch, stick figures, whatever, but something to like get you thinking about where you're at right now. What does that look like? So I'd love for you to just draw that out. What's your location right here, right now? Take just a minute, throw that in the chat. Would love to hear what those reflections are bringing up for you. Where are you at right now? Love to hear. And just feel free to share that in the chat. And again, I recognize we're kind of in a public space. And so that might feel, you know, a little vulnerable. So, um, and Sean, thanks for sharing. You're coaching a few managers in the, in the improvement kata. That's, that's awesome. So great. Anyone else? So with the improvement kata pattern, we talk about the challenge we're striving to achieve, where we're at, what our current condition is. And then we want to think about for us, um, and thank you, Kevin, journey is just beginning, the first steps. Wonderful. That's so awesome. As we think about this journey, right, this destination um, that we're on, right? I want you to think about that target condition. 
And you have this long dream goal. It may take you a year, two years, nine months, six months. But where do you want to be in one to two weeks? I want you to just write this down. Where do you want to be in one to two weeks on the road to doing it? Again, it's about breaking it down and making it into bite-sized chunks. So not like the next step, but like in two weeks, where do you want to be? Just write that down and then throw that in the chat. If you something comes to mind, again, it's not about like getting it perfect right now. It's just about putting something down to get you to continue to be thinking about this and where you're headed to. What's that target condition, the place you want to be in one to two weeks? Write that date down and what it is. And this is an activity you can continue to explore um, after. Any thoughts on your next mile post? Anything that comes to mind? Feel free to continue to put that in the chat. Love hearing from you all, those that are sharing. It's beautiful. Um, oh, that's awesome, Sean. Yeah, getting the managers I'm coaching to document their current conditions. Great. This is great. That's a great mile post. And then, you know, by what date? You want to have a date so that you can know how you're doing on the way to get there. So that's great. So lastly, in the improvement kata, right, the pattern has us talk about executing an experiment. So I want you to think about as you're moving towards that longer picture, you've understood where you're at, that next mile post, what's one step that you can take towards that today? And what do you expect? So it can feel like, you know, this young lady was on that road, like there's so many different paths I could take. And the goal, the, the point of the improvement cut is not to find the right path, but to just take one next step, one small step. So I'd love for you to share. What's that one step that you can take towards that today, towards what you've just set out in this picture? I'd love to hear if you're willing to share what's that step. I know we're getting close to the bottom of the hour, so I want to wrap things up here and let you know that, you know, I know this, this can be a hard place to be thinking about those big things. If you've been in a space where you've always settled, you've always done what you were supposed to do and never really felt seen, heard, and valued, if you've never felt confident, then just turning it on doesn't happen. And I love it, Chris. Thank you. Reading and praying, inner buildup to have something to give. Yes, great. Having that little next step is wonderful. And I've been there before. I felt in that place where I was scared. I was afraid to move forward. In fact, I was in that space as I was taking off from Katakan last March, coming back home. And I was listening to the book, Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. And in that book, she quotes Joseph Campbell, who's author mythologist, where George Lucas took a lot of his thinking behind Star Wars. And Joseph Campbell, he talks about that space, that the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And this quote has been propelling me forward almost on a daily basis. And I want you to think about this as you're moving forward, that this hidden gem of practicing the kata is that confidence, that, that belief that you can do this, that you got this. And so I want you to think about that. That is you're moving forward on your journey, practicing this improvement kata, that that is the gem that you're going to find in the back of that cave, but you have to move forward one step at a time. Now, I want to thank Lean Frontiers for this opportunity to share with you today about the hidden gem that I found. And I'd love to talk with you about that hidden gem that you want to find, that confidence and I love helping lean and ops leaders to help get them unstuck. And especially those that have been not seen, heard, and valued and felt that way and want to move forward to making an impact. I'd love to chat with you. So for, the, for my friends here at Lean Frontiers, I want to offer you a free 60-minute session to explore where you're headed to, where you're at now, and moving forward and what that would look like for you. So just go ahead and email me that, uh, that hidden gem confidence to illuminatecoachsam at gmail.com. And for the first three folks that um, email me that in the next 24 hours, I'll get you a shirt or a mug to remind you, you've got this. This hidden gem of the improvement kata, the Toyota kata, is confidence. And I'm thankful for being able to be here today. Skylar, Jim, Amanda, all the folks at Lean Frontiers, it's been an honor. And thank you, um, 
um, to you for being here and sharing. And of course, feel free to email me and I'd love to continue the conversation there. And of course, I'm on LinkedIn um, and look forward to chatting more in the future. Thank you, Skylar. Thanks, Jim. Sam, thank you so much. And to everybody about the chat feature, I'm very sorry. I'm glad I got it fixed. Um, and thank you for your participation in today's webinar. I will be sending a recording out within 24 to 48 hours. Sam, thank you again so much for being here. We will see you all soon. Bye-bye.